Hey, what's going on guys? Chris back with you with another unboxing and review video and today it's going to be right here for the Force One Hornet. Again, 5.8 FPV drone. That's right, 5.8 gigahertz. That is what you're going to start seeing more and more these days, getting away from 2.4. A lot of interference sometimes with 2.4 so that you're able to get communication with your drone a lot better. This is the red and white version right here. I'm not sure if they come in other colors or not, but we are going to be putting it to the test. Don't you worry about that. So without further ado, guys, we're not going to spend too much time looking at the box because we want to look at the drone. So let's go ahead and open this guy on up and take a little gander at her. Very nice. As we can see here, right as we open up the box here, our drone is laid out all beautifully right here with the prop guards already on it and the controller sitting right over here. The controller does come with a screen. That is absolutely phenomenal. So let's go ahead and lift out this styrofoam packaging and we're going to go ahead and pull it out and take a closer look at it. Here's your instruction manual underneath the package and that is your box right there. Let's go ahead and pull out the drone here. Alrighty, the drone is out and looking absolutely phenomenal. Not too much weight to it, definitely nice. Should be able to fly quick because of the weight. So that is looking great. Camera is up front. We'll take some closer specs at it here in just a second here. Battery is already inside and there also is inside the package here. We have four more props or propellers. We have a card reader, we have a micro USB card, we have a charger, we have a screwdriver, and all sorts of fun stuff in here. Let's take a quick gander at the micro SD card. If I said SIM card, I'm sorry, it's a micro SD card. And then we also have the top of the propellers there, little caps for the top of your propellers to make it look a little bit nicer right here. We have a four gigabyte class 10 micro hd micro sim card and this actually is a lot better than the typical ones normally when you buy drones you get this very generic really poor quality four gigabyte this is actually a class 10 very nice so that is your memory card reader for your usb slot there and then underneath that is another battery so you get two batteries and again each one of these batteries is a 350 milliamp 7.4 volt 2.59 wh absolutely phenomenal again you get two one's already in here one's right here two batteries ah excuse me three batteries i'm sorry this one looks a little bit smaller but this might be for the controller so this one's a double stack one this one is probably for the controller this one's a 450 milliamp battery 3.7 volt interesting either this one's for the controller or this one's for the controller not exactly sure quite yet Let's go ahead and bring out the controller here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, controller is out. Absolutely phenomenal. Definitely feels like a nice gaming controller here. I would not throw these little stick guards away because when I travel with my drones, I package up the drone in my suitcase with the controller pads on there. So do not throw those away. I recommend you keep those. Feels absolutely fantastic. Let's go ahead and remove that piece of plastic there off of the screen. Absolutely phenomenal. Looks like there is a battery already inside of it as it is firing up. We'll go ahead and take a look at that and see exactly what is in there. And it does look like the 450 milliamp 3.7 volt battery does go in the back of the controller. So you have two batteries for the drone and two batteries for the controller. Absolutely fantastic. Because it is not hooked up to FPV, there's nothing going on there, but you have an on and off button. Again, we'll get some close-up shots here. You have an on and off button for the screen, and then you have an on and off button right here in the middle for the connection to the actual drone. We do, again, have a battery already inside of the drone, and it looks like you have to use a screwdriver to unscrew the little itty bitty screw and then slide the battery compartment back. So you will need to take a little bit extra effort and keep the screwdriver with you so that you can slip in the new battery after your flight is done. We do have an on and off switch right over here. And again, the camera is here and then the FPV antenna is kind of hanging out the side but integrated into the actual body of the drone here. Let's get some close up shots 
And then of course, let's take it for a, for a little spinny spin. Well guys, take a look at that, beautiful. You can remove the prop guards if you want to. There are little screws right here, just remove that. I recommend using the prop guards. I always use the prop guards. I don't care if it looks a little funnier. I think it looks fine. And so if you guys want a smaller drone, obviously for travel, then you can take off the prop guards if you really wanted to. Camera is right up front right here, landing gear. Again, our on off switch is right here. The little screw I was talking about to slip out the battery would be right here and then you push this back. Connection to the battery is right underneath here. FPV antenna is right there. Our battery of course as you can see is inside right here. Very nice, well designed, again nice and light. It says Hornet right up top. As you can see there, the back of it, nothing there. We do have lights underneath here as well. Let's go ahead and fire it up, see if it's connected already, which it does not look like it's connected. So it looks like we need to go ahead and connect that. They ship that, of course, unconnected. That's actually very smart. We look like we have LED lights through here, what it looks like to be, probably somewhere around in here, integrated in here. We're gonna be putting that to a test, don't worry about that. Little hood here, a little scoop over underneath, over the camera, as we can see there. Overall, really nice. Let's go ahead and grab our controller here. The controller, I'm very impressed with the controller. Nice weight to it. Definitely feels like a little gaming controller. That's your on and off button for the controller. And then let's go ahead and turn the screen on right here. As we can see, it's we're not connected to FPV. Uh, there's looks like there's brightness, camera, all that good stuff. Your trim button's all right here. Looks like the battery's a little bit low. You'll need to go ahead and recharge that. But very nice overall. And we have, again, our battery goes right through here. And if you really want to, you can put a little screw in there if you want. Let me go ahead and turn that off. It's a little annoying. Probably a low battery indicator. But very nice controller overall. It does not flip up or flip down, anything like that. But we do have little buttons on the back here, here, and here. But again, very nice. I like it. I like it overall, as you can see my reflection. That's probably, if you're wondering the size of that screen, here's a regular iPhone 6 4.7 inch screen, and that is a tiny bit smaller than that. So that's about a maybe 4, 4.2 inch screen, maybe a 4.4, 4.5 inch screen or so. Ballpark somewhere around there. Anyway, it's a pretty good size. Again, there's your typical regular iPhone compared to it. It's a little bit wider than the actual iPhone screen it looks like, or maybe about the same, or maybe a little less, but not bad. Overall, very nice. Guys, overall a very, very stable drone when you trim it just right. Right now it's in hovering mode, and again, you gotta trim it so it just sits back just beautifully. But it does a great job holding altitude. And then of course, just kinda mess around with the sticks. Right now the camera's facing you. And absolutely phenomenal. Do a little 360, go up and down the hallway. A very stable drone again, guys. Again, the trim buttons right here, just play around with your trims if it's floating over to the left or the right a little bit. Holds altitude again very briefly. Again, I'm not doing anything right now. It's just holding altitude. It'll kind of sway a little bit, but overall, guys, it's a great, very, very stable drone. Right now, we're gonna practice the one-touch landing button here. So let's get in that clear path. And I just hit it right now. Very nice, guys. So as we can see here, sorry if the noise was pretty loud, but that is about a four by four or less little square here from the stool to the chair to the couch. And as you can see here, it just landed straight down, popped a couple times, kind of took a couple little hops, but I did not hit any other buttons besides the one key landing button right there, which again is gonna be the bottom one here on the remote control. FPV sometimes gets a little sketchy, but overall not bad at all, and I like it integrated into a controller like that, which makes it easier so you don't have to worry about your cell phone and stuff like that. Again, you can mess around with the contrast, video record right off controller here, which is nice. Or if you don't want FPV and you wanna shut that down again, just hit the power button on that. Controller is still going, but the screen is off. Screen is back on now. All right, guys, I wanna show you a feature that you're definitely gonna need, especially if you're a beginner flight or if it does crash into a tree, etc. Now, in order to start it, 
I personally like the controls where I go right off the bat, it goes up, goes down, and I can control it like that. I don't have to start the engine, so to speak, start the propellers. This one, you gotta pinch them in like this. It starts, but it doesn't go anywhere until you lift up the accelerator. I personally like mode one better than mode two, but there are a couple modes for, and again, it saves some battery, so it'll go ahead and kill it if you're not doing it. So anyway, I personally like the accelerator over here instead of over here. I like to control it this way, accelerator up and down here. So, something you're gonna have to keep in mind. So, let's say I start and I crash, right? And I immediately wanna cut the engines. I take the two top buttons on the back right here. Same time, kill it. Let me do that one more time. Kills it right off the bat, I like that because right here, if you can see, I accidentally got it caught underneath my coffee table and the prop was whipping around. You can probably see the black of the coffee table on there. And it just kept going until I remembered the kill switch. Now, obviously you don't wanna do that in midair. Be careful. It will kill it if you're high up and it will just drop like a fly. So be careful about that, guys. So that's something you wanna keep in mind. Don't keep your fingers on that kill switch because again, if it goes up, let's try it just a little bit and I'll show you. And falls out of the sky. <laughs> so as you can see, be careful with that feature. But overall guys, it's a great drone. Again, very stable, play with your trims, and it's definitely nice just to hover there, and it's a definitely a great drone to start out with before you go up to the big leagues like paying $1,000 for a drone. You wanna dial in these ones, especially being able to control it, know your controls, know your cameras, etc. I would recommend keeping the prop guards on to make it last longer. And also, again, don't consider this to be GoPro quality. Again, that's a lot smaller camera. It's just typical cell phone footage, older cell phone footage, 720p HD. Looks like the camera is actually slightly pointed down. Obviously, if it's going straight, it's gonna be getting a downward angle shot. So I was actually having it right head level like this, but I actually had my head cut off because the camera is actually coming down more this direction here. So just know that you're gonna to have to go a little bit higher than your subject so the camera angle can hit it just right. So again, don't go head level with it because it'll actually come down and hit my chin area here. That's the way the camera is angled. And also, lastly, I actually killed the battery. The battery was shot, the drone was out of juice, landed itself safely right in my house, right here, and then just killed, and then the controller killed it as well. It just kind of knew that the battery was done and shabango. So, that was a great feature. And lastly guys, the FPV, it is good. It will sketch a little bit. The display is nice again, like I mentioned, but don't expect top of the line FPV with absolutely no glitches. It depends what you're around. If you're in the middle of nowhere, like in the middle of a park, you might be doing better than some interference around a house with microwaves, computers, cell phones, etc. Overall, it did do a good job, but just know that you wanna keep it in your line of sight also because of maybe some interference around your area where you are flying. And also flight time. It depends how fast you're going. It depends how much motion you're going, up and down, all that good stuff. Flight time, typically, again, it's a smaller battery. You're gonna get about five to seven minutes or so. Definitely purchase extras as well. I'll try to link those in the description box as well so that you can have more flight time. Obviously, if you're going and traveling in your car or even walking to the park, you wanna get at least 20, 30 minutes of flight time before you have to come home. So definitely grab at least four to six extra batteries charge them all up and just go have a great time. But overall, I do like it. Again, on off button here, cool lights on the bottom, red and kind of white LEDs there. Landing gear is nice, one touch landing works great. A couple cons of the drone though that I don't like personally is Again, it's gonna be more secure with that screw in there, but you will have to go out to the park with the screwdriver. You'll need to unscrew the screw, unlatch the compartment for the battery before you slip in the next battery for double flight. Now, if you're only flying at one time in your backyard, you don't care, but if you bring two or more batteries out to the park, you're gonna to have to unscrew that to get into the flap. Again, that makes it more secure, but it makes it a little bit inconvenient because you will have to remember your screwdriver so you can pop your next battery in. So I would recommend keeping that in your pouch wherever you keep your extra batteries keep that in your pouch to make sure you don't forget that when you go to the park also another awesome thing about the drone is they give you a legit good class 10 4 gigabyte newer 
micro SD memory card, which is absolutely phenomenal because again, that is a lot higher quality. Overall, I really do like the drone, nice and light. I love the controller with the display right on there. They give you again, two batteries for the controller, two batteries for the drone. Great instruction manual right there, easy to figure out, definitely fun to play with, and definitely to take for a spin. Well, thank you guys so much for watching the review. Hopefully it has helped you out. And again, look in the description box below where I'm gonna be featuring this drone and stay tuned for more videos because I got a lot more coming for you. And if you haven't already subscribed, my name's Chris, I'll see you guys on the next one, bye-bye.